recently the academic aspect of the boycott campaign has come to the forefront, especially in America where it appears to be perhaps the most successful aspect of the campaign. And we're now seeing you know, really prominent academics such as um, the winner of last year's uh, Nobel Prize in Chemistry come out in support of BDS. However, a lot of academics remain a little bit reluctant to touch the issue. Um, I was hoping you could tell us a bit about why you think an academic boycott is important and how academics who are ambivalent or a bit worried may react to it. Um, well, I think um, academics are uh, a timid group. <laughs> uh, that, I mean, you have to begin there anyway. That they, you know, on all these issues, if you talk privately to academics, they're much bolder than they are prepared to be. And part of that is a sense that the uh, academic undertaking is one that should be depoliticized and uh, uh, made to appear at least uh, objective and, and neutral. And that it's important that students have confidence that their views will not be uh, uh, regarded as unacceptable by those teaching them. So that there is that kind of uh, serious uh, academic attitude toward uh, political engagement. Uh, I feel, and I think uh, uh, others that are uh, active, is that part of what uh, uh, a university experience should involve is uh, developing an understanding of what engaged citizenship in a democratic society means. And this issue is particularly uh, delicate because uh, you're, be, you're likely to be uh, experienced, if you're effective at all, you're likely to uh, engender some kind of uh, hostile pushback, uh, and therefore it's intimidating. For instance, in my own experience, being against the Vietnam War was a perfectly respectable thing to do, uh, and there was no uh, pushback. Iran was on the borderline, and of course Palestine is uh, in enemy territory. <laughs> And so uh, there are these uh, distinctions based on the nature of the issue and how it's perceived within uh, the wider society. Uh, but I think things are changing, and uh, often uh, faculty learn from their students. And uh, I know uh, at Princeton during the 60s, when there was a lot of student radicalism, uh, the alumni blamed uh, me for being uh, agitating the students, whereas as the reality was the opposite. They were agitating me. <laughs> and, and I tried my best not to uh, disappoint them too much. <laughs> uh, but, but, the, but the older generations perceived uh, this kind of teacher-student relationship as a one-way hierarchy in which uh, uh, the teacher transmits values and knowledge uh, to, the stu to this passive uh, student body. And, uh, and at a time like this, that's sometimes true, I think, but at a time like the 60s where there was this uh, uh, kind of, what's sometimes been called the Cultural Revolution, uh, in, in the U.S. at any rate, uh, it was the students that were teaching the faculty. And we can maybe welcome the return of something of that sort in the period. I 